Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I made the nursery wall art that you see pictured on the screen here. I also have it printed and framed. This is not that hard to create and using canva.com it's a great way to get some easy and inexpensive wall art up for your home. Okay, so the materials you need for this project. First, if you plan to print it on your home printer, I would suggest investing in a little bit of thicker paper than your regular standard letter size paper. I printed this on matte photo paper from Canon, and this is letter size. I like a matte finish to my prints. You may like a glossy finish. You can choose whichever one appeals to you. Now, I also had an 8x10 frame, and I knew that my size of artwork was going to be 8 by 10 so that's why I chose this letter size and I decided that I would just trim off the edges using a paper trimmer so that it would fit in my frame. If you have an 11 by 14 frame you can make that wall art but you may have to get it printed at an office supply store or a store like Walmart or Target or somewhere else where you can print prints or you can get it shipped to you online using Vista Print or Prints of Love or another service. Also, I bought clip art from designbundles.net. I'm not a graphic designer or an artist, so it's great for me to leverage the work of other artists that they've created for the commercial use. I do resell printables online, so I like to buy clip art that has the commercial use license. If you are using this personally and trying to create wall art for your own home, maybe this is something that you don't need to worry about, but if you think you might be reselling printables online, always be sure to check out the terms of the font and clip art that you purchase online. And here at designbundles.net, they make it very clear about the licenses that you are buying. And it's definitely something that you should read so you understand exactly what is okay and what is not. Now, this clip art was a dollar back in early December. It's now $14 at the time of this video. Designbundles.net has a lot of deals. I'll link to it below, but you'll probably find some clip art that you like there for a very affordable price. And when you get the clip art, it comes like this, and you can turn it into some of the things that they have here, like a baby onesie or gift tags or things like that. Now, the last thing that you need to get started is a canva.com online account. I started with the free account, but I've since upgraded to pro, which is only $10 per month if you buy the annual plan. You don't need the pro account for what we're doing here today. When you have the pro account, it makes things a lot easier for you. The pro account allows you to upload your own fonts that you may have purchased on a website like Design Bundles. And it also allows you to do one click resizing, which for wall art, if you do plan on ever selling it, it's a lot easier to make uh, changes between the sizes. Like for example, let's say my frame was a larger frame and then later I, I wanted to use it on a smaller frame and offer those two sizes. I can do that in one click with Canva Pro, but you don't need Canva Pro today. Okay, so let's get started. When you log into Canva, you click this button here, create a design on the top left, and then enter eight by 10 inches because that is the size that I'm making today. Now, if you want to make a larger size, you can absolutely enter that here. The one no-no when you are resizing, always make it bigger and then resize down versus making it smaller and resize bigger. So for example, let's say that I do want to have two sizes of this print. I would make 16 by 20 first and then print it down to 8 by 10 versus making 8 by 10 first and then trying to stretch it out to be 16 by 20 because stretched artwork does not look good. So I clicked create a design and I'm going to uploads and then click upload an image or video. This is where you upload the clip art that you purchased that you want to use. I like to upload the PNG version of the clip art because it typically has a transparent background. And sometimes I like to use dark backgrounds for my work and it's easier to work off of the PNG. So um, I've already uploaded these to Canva, but what you would do is you would click them and then click open. So here it is here to get it on your artboard. All you do is click on it under images. And then Canva has smart guides that are these pink lines that show up. So to center it, you can move it around here. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, you click the corners and can drag it up or down. Definitely be care careful on stretching whatever you're making too much because you don't want it to look bad. And also, white space is your friend. 
I used to cram all of my images with things and then realize it looked a lot better. Less is more. Okay, so I'm going to put a crown on it. This is something else that I purchased. Now, for those of you that are interested in doing this for a commercial use or a resale perspective, it's very important for you to note that you need to change this design somewhat significantly for most licenses. I don't know what clip art you purchased or the terms of your license, but they typically don't allow you to, for example, just print out a piece of art with just the artwork that you bought. You have to make significant changes to it. Also, this piece of art is inspired by a documentary I'm watching called Tiger King on Netflix. This is a little lion cub king. I don't know if you have watched it, but it's definitely an interesting one. Okay, so next I'm going to do text. So you click text in this left nav, and I'm clicking here to add the text to the page. I'm going to say, be wild, add lots of spaces, my child. And the reason that I want the spaces is that I want it to be to the left and the right of this little guy. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do control A or double click and drag and highlight it all. And then at the top here, I'm going to change it to be the font that I want it to be. Canva has a lot of different fonts and I am using one that I've uploaded because I have Canva Pro. You upload fonts in the brand kit section of Canva. So here is one called Medina Clean that I've purchased that I like the way that it looks. And then by double clicking, I'm selecting it all again and I'm going to make it bigger. That's probably a little bit too big for what I need here. You can also make it custom size here too. Okay, I'm going to drag it all the way out. I went a little space crazy, so I'm deleting the spaces. Okay. And I think this a little bit smaller is going to look better. And then I'm gonna twist it using this button here. And I'll make it 11 degrees and try to center it around this guy. Okay, now when you're changing the color, highlight the whole thing, and then here under text color, click. Canva will pull out the colors that are in the images, so I want this gold. I can do that by clicking here, or you can always click up here and enter in your own colors. But there we go. Now, if you want to display the artwork a different way to see which one you like, but you don't want to lose what you had, you can just click copy page and that will copy everything down to a new page. And then you can click outside the artboard and drag and make this bigger or however you want to make the changes to it. Now for this, I'm actually going to duplicate using that top right button and I'm going to delete the be wild so that the my child and be wild are on separate lines because I think that will look better here. And you can always left align, right align, center align up here. You can change the spacing between the letters and also between rows using this spacing button here. Now for this particular one, I think that the text doesn't show up with the gold, so I'm going to make this just a little bit darker than the gold that I have. I'm highlighting the text, um, and I'm also going to click shift and then click the other text so I can just do this at once. Clicking under new color and then just dragging down so it's just a little bit of a darker version of the one that I have. Okay, and then I'm going to zoom out. And then that way I can just take a look at what I've created. Now I can click off the artboard and highlight just the animals if I can get them. There we go. And I wanna make this a little bit more zoomed in. Okay, cool. Now you need to be very careful when you're printing to the edge of something because it's likely that it might fall off the screen. It might fall out of the printer boundaries when you're printing. So that's something that I'm always careful of. Okay. So what I could do is decide which one of these looks that I actually liked better. And you know that I went with the first one because that's what I have here. Okay, so I wanna quickly show you how to create other pieces of wall art. So I'm duplicating, highlighting everything, and then clicking the delete button on my computer. 
There's also a trash button that shows up here in the top right if you ever want to delete. I'm clicking this artboard again. And under uploads, I also bought a clip art that looks like this. It's a hand lettered clip art. Now, if this is for personal use and it's just in your house, you can typically buy clip art online and size it to be whatever you want, just like this and print it out. Because I also like to make printables to sell them, I that's not something that I do. Um, so I'm going to show you how to change this up. I'm going to make a frame here under elements on the left nav, elements, frame, see all. I'm choosing the circular frame. And what a frame does is it just allows you to place an image in it and it will fill up the entire frame. So here is the frame that I have. Now you also, you can make it anything you want. You can make it this, for example, by dragging and dropping, which is kind of cool. And th these are all different pieces of clip art that I've bought. That's a chalkboard example. And what I'm going to do is add some text to it. I'm going to say, be a dreamer. Okay, and then I'm going to make this another font that I have purchased. It's called Little Bestseller Regular, and I'll link to everything in the video notes if you do like any of this font. Put here. Now I'm going to add a little subheading. Let's say that this is in a kid's nursery, and this is the name of the kid. Evelyn Marie. Typically any of the Canva default fonts are not ones that you want to use just because they're more plain, but Canva does have plenty of other fonts to choose from. And some of them do are included in the Google font library, which is a great place that you can find free fonts. So this one that I know of the Barlow, I believe it's from there, but Canva has it. And I'm going to use that because when you typically have a fancier display handwriting type font it looks best when there's one that's kind of smaller underneath it and uh, more plain leave some more white space there okay all right so i'm gonna zoom back in again so you can see the finished product this is what they look like so let's say that you want to print them you click this download button on the top right under file type choose pdf print and then you can select the page or pages that you want to print out i like to select the crop marks and bleed that gives you some sort of guideline and typically professional printers will request it because then they know where to trim the edges since i am trimming the edges on my own it just is helpful to have the crop marks and bleed and what that does is just leave a little bit of margin around the edges of the paper and then I know kind of where to cut. So after I print this out on the Canon paper that I showed you at the beginning of this video, I just I trim it up and then I put it into the frame here. Now make sure when you're printing it that you select high quality print and all the settings on your printer to make sure that you are um, not printing like black and white or printing a version that is not high quality and not a photo not a photo setting so that the print looks exactly as you are expecting there are some changes between what you see on the screen and what you print out so make sure that you do test this to be sure that you're not printing to the edge and everything looks good and that the colors are what you expect all right have fun and enjoy your art